Adrenaline balloon makes the girls all move. Oh, hello. So it's been said that you make 80% of your gains in the first two years of training. Now, I don't know if this is actually true. Maybe it's a year and a half or two and a half years or 83% or 78% or something like that. But it is absolutely true that you do make the vast majority of your progress in the first few years of quality training. Which leads to the question, why keep going? If you can get to 80% after a couple of years, why would you ever keep investing that time and effort and energy and, and keep devoting your resources to getting that last 20%? You know how much I sacrificed? No one cares about your physique. It's the Pareto Principle. If you can get the vast majority without that much effort, why keep going? In this video, I'm going to give you some reasons to keep going. The first is that you don't actually know where you are on that asymptote. Just because you've trained for two years, that doesn't mean you're at 80%. A lot of people train for two years and they're at 50% or 40% or closer to 0%. A lot of people don't make any progress in the gym. In fact, I would say the vast majority of people fuck up their first year of training or two years of training or their entire career of training on a grandiose scale. So you might think you're at 80% when you're actually not even close to 80%. So don't just try to maintain your 80% physique when you don't actually know that it's your 80% physique. Next, those last 20%, they make a huge difference in your physique. Over the past couple of years, I put on three or maybe four kilos of muscle, and it's made a very visible, large difference in how I look. Don't underestimate those last few kilos and pounds of muscle. They can make a tremendous difference. If you go from like a 16 inch arm to a 17 inch arm, that is absolutely visually apparent. This is partly because it's a bell curve. So if you look at people in the gym, most people are average. If you're 80%, you know, you probably look slightly better than average. But if you put on just like five extra kilos of muscle, which could take a few years, you're going to look way better than average. As human beings, we tend to compare people around us, don't we? It's just what we do by nature. And so these small changes, they really do add up. A good example is the 100 meter dash. Now, hear me out. I know this is not bodybuilding related, but it is an excellent example of what happens when you get close to the end of the asymptote. If you run a 10.1 100-meter dash as a man, that is excellent. That is very good. But on the world scene, that is absolutely not notable. Unless you are very, very young, like you're a high schooler, or you're very, very old, like you're over 40 years old, or you're white. So a 10.1 gets you into the top 3,000 times of all time. If you improve just 1%, 10.00, that is now in the top thousand times of all time. If you go from 10.1 to 10.0, you go from a relative nobody to potentially making the Olympics for most countries. Maybe not the US, but for most countries, you are going to the Olympics. If you improve 1% more, you go down to 9.9, .9, you are now in the top 400 times of all time. And you are a genuine threat to make the Olympic final and potentially even medal. You improve 1% more, 9.80, you are now a threat to win the gold medal for most years, where no one named Usain Bolt is running. And that gets you into the top 40 times of all time. If you improve just 1% more and run 9.70, you are winning basically every race. Tyson Gay ran 9.71 in 2009 in, in Berlin and came second to Usain Bolt. But every other race, you are absolutely winning. 9.7, it makes you absolutely one of the greatest sprinters of all time. No questions asked. If you improve just 1% more, you are the greatest of all time. Because Usain Bolt ran 9.58, very similar to 9.6. So, the difference between Usain Bolt, who everyone knows and is a living legend, and 10.1, who literally no one will know, no one remembers your name, is 5%, just 5%. It's not a blink of an eye, it's very visible, but in the grand scheme of things, it's still just 5%. So at the edges, at the periphery of human potential or your potential, things absolutely matter. 
40,000 years of evolution and we barely even tapped the vastness of human potential. Next, maintenance is not as easy as a lot of people think. Physiologically, maintaining muscle is much easier than trying to actively gain muscle. Much easier. However, in practice, sometimes maintenance is not as easy as you think. It is difficult to find motivation and discipline and consistency when your goal is exactly the same as you are now. It is much easier to chase improvement than chase nothing at all. And I've seen a lot of people who aim to maintain. They say, oh, I'm happy with my physique, and they don't even go nowhere. They go backwards because they stop training hard, they stop going to the gym, other stuff gets in the way, and they regress. They slide backwards. And so if you're going to go to the gym, you might as well train hard. You might as well try to improve. There's really not that much in terms of the opportunity cost. If you're going to go, you might as well grow. There's also the learning factor. So in your first year or two, it's not like everything works. Anyone who says everything works will look around. There are still a lot of beginners who are not anywhere close to maximizing their progress. However, it is true that more things work and you don't need to be as accurate with a lot of the factors of training or diet or nutrition or anything else. So you can mess up your volume. You can do super high or super low. You'll grow anyway. Your intensity, your frequency, exercise selection, exercise technique, your effort, your consistency. You can mess up a lot of things as a beginner and still see pretty good results. And if you have great genetics and you put in a good effort, you can still see fantastic results, even with everything being very suboptimal. But the more advanced you get, the harder it is. The closer you get to that genetic natural muscular potential, the tougher it is. Things slow down and you are forced to get better. You are literally forced to learn, to discover, to optimize the process. Because if you don't, you will plateau. For as a beginner, probably not. Now, some people might see this as a bad thing. Oh, oh shit, I have to learn? I see this as a good thing because you get better feedback from your training. As a beginner, you're not really getting feedback from your training, okay? Because again, almost everything will work and you don't really have anything to A, B test because you've never hit a plateau. Plateaus teach you a lot. Now, it's worth noting that two things will absolutely confound this. First, genetics. For some people, their top physique, their 100%, well, 99%, you can't hit 100%, but your 99, 98% almost maxed out physique simply won't be that impressive if you don't have great genetics. Whereas other people, if you have top tier premium power pack genetics, your 70 or 80% might actually look more impressive. So this is definitely a confounding factor. Second, drugs. These absolutely shift things quite a bit. And you can go from 90% of your genetic natural and muscular potential past 100% in one year of taking various compounds. I've been killing the weights recently. We killed them. We? Remember your little accident in the laboratory? The performance enhancers. Bingo. Me, your greatest creation. <laughs> and so normally if you see someone with an impressive head turning physique which is probably not 80 percent but when you're getting to 90 95 percent yeah you're going to look different than most other people when you see someone like that they know a thing or two about a thing or two about training about program about discipline about consistency about technique all these things but when you throw drugs in and when you combine that with premium genetics all bets are off Maybe they know their shit, but maybe they don't. You and I are not so different. I'm not like you. You take the drugs. Well, do each his own. Here's the real truth. But how? The cunning warrior attacks neither body nor mind. Tell me how! His gains. Osborne, first we attack his gains. Misery, 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 that's what you've chosen. I offered you friendship, and you spat in my face. And ultimately, those small details in a physique, they do matter. So an 80% physique versus a 95% physique 
will look very, very different, more than that 15% would actually indicate. And the closer you get to 100%, the more those extra 1% differences actually matter. On the other hand, it does take more and more time and effort and energy. And so if you get to 80% or 85% or 75%, not that you'll be able to measure any of this shit, but if you get to a physique that isn't freaking huge and you're just satisfied and happy with how you look, there's absolutely nothing wrong with saying, all right, I'm done. I've walked down this road far enough. This is the right place for me. Because ultimately there's a lot more in life than just maximizing your muscle mass. All right. That's all for this video. Like, subscribe, share, turn on those notifications so that you decide what you watch, not the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.